This lesson, we're going to be adding jQuery into our mix. So we've already got our URL here. So let's create another area here. And then in here, I want to create a select option. So this is going to be selecting the resource that the user wants to use in order to make the Ajax call to the available URL that we've specified there in that above input. So the first one will be a value of just plain old JavaScript. And let's uh, duplicate this one out and a couple more times because we're ultimately at the end of this application, we're not just going to have JavaScript, we're going to have jQuery. Let's update our text here as well. We're also going to have Aquios. So that's a really nice light Ajax library. It's promise based. Axios. And also JavaScript fetch. So we'll just call it fetch. I know it's still JavaScript. It uh, works in uh, the newer browsers. It doesn't work in some of the older browsers. Uh, so this one uses promises. This one, These two still use the same JavaScript XHR, XML, HTTP request. So they're still going to be using that same request. So that's why all three of these are going to work across browsers. And fetch is, fetch is a little bit newer. So it uses promises and it makes the connection in a little bit of a different way. And this is still all vanilla JavaScript, but it's still relatively new. So not all the browsers are uh, able to work with fetch. So that's why fetch really it's, it's coming along, but it's still not there yet as uh, we need to have support for across browsers. So now that we've gotten this selection process, we need to have a way whenever the user makes the request so we can add in over here which call it's going to make. So we know that we've got our JavaScript one. And we should also grab, so do a variable. And this one, we want to see what resource it's going to be using. So resource or library, we can call it resource. Because then, of course, JavaScript isn't a library. So we just call it whatever resource we want to use to make the Ajax call. And query selector. And the same type of format where we're grabbing it by the name. And then whatever the value is within the name. So it's resource. And then we don't need to do anything else with that. So we'll just grab it as value. And let's do a switch over here because we are going to have four different ones. So we want to switch depending on what the resource is and depending on what the value is. So let's do a case for jQuery as that's going to be our first one. And here we can do an Ajax. So it's not going to be JS. How about JQ? JQ for jQuery. So it's going to do a jQuery call. And we're still passing over that same URL. And we're going to add in some additional parameters as well. And because this is a case, we need to break that. And then let's uh, let's just have our default case. So the default is just going to be this regular JavaScript one. So there we go. So that's all set up. And we can duplicate our JavaScript function and update it for jQuery. So next, we need to grab a jQuery library. We're just going to use CDN. So there's a great resource, developers.google.com. It's got all a bunch of different really useful CDNs. So I'm going to just grab it from there. Bring the jQuery library into our project. Make sure you place it above script. If you place it afterwards, it's not going to have access to the jQuery uh, functionality. So next, we've got our JS. So we've got a reword this so let's call it jq and we can keep that console message of worked so it's always good to make sure that things are working so let's uh, set up our jquery call so it's going to be quite a bit different it's going to be a lot shorter as well and then within here we're going to pass a bunch of data so we've got a url we've got a type so currently the type is going to be just get. So we'll just specify that for now and we're going to make it dynamic. And you can do success as well. Sometimes uh, developers like to use success here and then they grab whatever the data is and then they maybe do something with the data. So console 
log the data. And in this case, let's add that in as done. So we're going to do, we're going to chain it together and we're going to create a function here. So function, so when it's done, we got that response content coming back. So we'll call it response over here to differentiate it. Up, up there we had called it data. And so next we can output that content. And yes, jQuery is quite a bit shorter. It's a lot more readable too, uh, as opposed to what we see within the regular JavaScript. We can get rid of all of that stuff as well now. So this is jQuery. So let's uh, update our response to be jQuery. And we also have a status. So we're using response. So it's going to be response status. And then we're just going to be outputting that entire response. And the difference here is as well that this is going to be detected. Uh, so if it's in a JSON format, it's going to detect that it's a JSON format. So when it picks that up and it sends it into our output, it's going to take that parameter in. It's going to check to see if it's a string. It's going to see that it's not a string. So it's going to parse the object into... It's actually just going to do the response text. So this it does this if it is a string. So this is the true and that's the false. So it's going to just return that response text. And then over here, when we're outputting, we're stringifying those values. And before we actually go out, this one here, we need to grab it by resource because we've got an ID for it. It's not just an input. Uh, so that one has an ID of resource. So let's update that before we try to grab it as an input. We wouldn't be able to pick that up. So I think we're ready to try this out. So let's open up our browser, refresh, make the request. So the JavaScript is still working. Let's do jQuery. So jQuery is working as well. So we're able to return back that data. And the reason it's printing it out twice, because within the jQuery, we're actually logging out that response there. So if we comment that one out, and I'm going to keep that in just as a placeholder uh, in case you want to use it within the success format. So there we go. So jQuery, JavaScript, making their requests, all working. So next, and let's uh, also make sure that it's outputting properly. So we've got our jQuery response. So status is undefined. So let's fix that one up. And we've got a number of other parameters here that we can return back. So one of them is the text status. And then lastly, let's return back that whole XHR object. So this is the entire XHR. And then within here, that's where we can actually grab the status. So let's refresh and just make sure everything's working before we move on to the next step. So we see that we're getting the status of 200. So that's the one that we wanted and JavaScript response. So everything's working properly. So go ahead and update your code. And the next lesson, we're gonna bring in Axios library. And then we're also gonna do it in fetch coming up. So all of this still to come.